So today I'm going to do another video based around the Twin Flame by popular demand. And this time I'm going to talk about the Dark Knight of the Soul and recognising your Twin Flame even though you're in the Dark Knight of the Soul. I'll see you after this intro. So welcome back, my name's M of Volcanic Holistics where we learn together and we grow together in the sight of God. So today, as I said, I'm gonna speak about the Twin Flame and the Dark Knight of Soul. Hmm. So I bet you're thinking, if the Twin Flame comes across so negative, how the hell can you recognize your Twin Flame? So I'm gonna give you seven points on how to identify them and also how you can identify yourself and your link with them as well. So first of all, I'd just like to say, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Of course, it helps the channel to grow and I like your loyalty so far. And um, let's just jump right into this. So the first one I'm gonna speak about is death through being awakened. So I'll be wondering, what the hell death through being awakened? Well, death through being awakened, it means that at the end of your stressing where you are at, so, in the Dark Knight of the Soul, let me just briefly, roughly talk about the Dark Knight of the Soul, what that represents and what it is about, because that way you can see what I mean about the death bit coming in. And death doesn't mean you're going to die or your 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 um, twin flame's going to die. It's not about that. It's about coming. It's about coming out of the Dark Knight of the Soul. So let's just look at the Dark Knight of the Soul. The Dark Knight of the Soul is a form of spiritual meditation when you're trapped in this particular situation or with this feeling and no matter what you try and do to try and overcome it it just seems to be stuck in you seem to be stuck kind of like in like a, a prison or a quicksand the good thing about the dark night soul if you're in it it's about growth so as you've heard me before say don't grow, learn through it to grow through it because as you grow you do become self-aware and you become a more stronger individual. So let me just speak about the, obviously the death part of it. So when you're going through this darkness or this really negative energy and or this really negative situation, there is no, there seems to be no other form of, so as you're kind of like trapped in this like form of quicksand, the dark night of the soul is about, it's like a journey really. It's, it's like the hero's journey. It's, it's, a, it's a time for you to reflect and to make them changes that you may be in. So how does this link to your twin flame? So when you're in a dark night of soul and you are looking for, you're trying to manifest your twin flame and then you go through a period of loneliness and loss and confusion, this is an indication when this person is coming into your life or they have arrived because what happens is everything gets shaken up and then something happens in your life that ends dramatically. You may move, you may change jobs, you may change home, you may change the way you are, you may change your diet, you may just, within yourself, you may just feel that shift. That's the end of your, your process or your cycle, and your new cycle begins with your new partner. So say for example, you're always going out, going to bars and so on, and you're looking for that perfect person and you, you, you're, you're trying to mani um, manifest these people and you're trying to bring these, this energy into your circle but nothing seems to be happening. You're doing uh, obviously all the things through the law of attraction but nothing seems to be manifesting. Well, this is a time when it is showing that the dark night of the soul is coming to an end and your twin flame is about to appear. So point two is Love yourself before loving others. Now, you've heard me many times say this, like how the hell could you say you love someone else if you don't love yourself? And that's a part of the uh, Dark Knight of the Soul and the hero's journey is about becoming self-aware, appreciating who you are and appreciating what you're about and that's where gratitude kicks in. 
if you continue to constantly be in a negative phase and complaining about the stuff that is happening to you and you don't see any changes until you don't make those changes within yourself and then just start appreciating what you have and who you are even the minute things even the, the, the house you live in the car you drive the job you have the people that you're associated with even right down to the desk you sit at if you have those appreciations that's when you become you begin to start loving yourself because you won't be able to transmit this negative frequency or this so you won't be able to um, project this positive frequency if you're in a state of negativity you cannot get better if you don't have the right medication you can't get better if you don't do the right meditation so it's about you overcoming and becoming somebody more advanced within yourself and about looking at yourself looking at your even looking at your the stuff that you don't like about yourself and then once you can identify the things you don't like about yourself those things can be changed so if you don't like your size you don't like um, the way you speak so you don't like who you are within yourself you don't like that you snap really quickly and a part of the dark night so as well is that you get really really kind of vengeful and get really kind of short-tempered it's not necessarily your fault it's a part of this spiritual de um, depression that you go you're going through doesn't mean you can go around and start having a go at everybody it's a means about that you need to become aware of what it is and what it's about because once you start learning what you where you are then you can start to move forward and grow grow into this other energy that you meant to be and not being this person you can't manifest something positive if you're in a state of negativity once you start stay in a light and you're going to get people going to come up against you and try and hold and say oh you know the vision board don't work um, manifestation don't work law attraction don't work therapy don't work all these stuff people are going to come up against you you know what this boils down to what you believe and what you feel because you're the one manifesting it you have to learn to switch off you have to learn to look at what you are and who you are and what resonates with you again you know what just be respectful say okay fine that's what you believe and just move on i can tell you the amount of times people constantly criticize anything i try to do to to advance myself forward instead of um kind of coming a lot aligning themselves with me i just say okay fair enough and then i just move on and just keep my path from where i'm going and then i manifest these things and they'll be the first people in the, in a queue to come to try and pay homage or to try and be a part of your light that you're basking in so be self-aware so point three is about being honest so being honest where it's a massive part of the dark night itself it's a massive part about your growth it's a massive part about you being um, finding your twin flame because when you're honest um, with yourself when you're honest with the people around you when you're honest in your evaluation about what you can achieve and what you can't achieve um, then you can start to start building them blocks for example if you're building the blocks and you i see my grandkids do this when they're building blocks and they start putting each block on top of each other and then they see it start wobbling they don't go they don't carry on building they knock it down and they start again so that's when i talk about being honest they're honest with their actual approach to um, the actual building of this individual thing that they're trying to create and it's the same with you if something isn't working right you need to be honest with yourself why it isn't working and how you can shift it in order to make it a lot better and you know what even if you are where you are and where you live in the car you drive the, the house that you the house that you own or the um the job that you're um, going to if you're not happy there you can change it you don't have to stay so number four is about obsession no not the perfume is about not stressing out so don't become obsessed with the people that you are with don't get when she that or he arrives don't get obsessed with wanting to see them 24 7 you feel so comfortable with them and when you start feeling like you've met someone new and then 
they go and you want to start spending time with them even more um, and then you they you come back and you just feel so safe so relaxed you don't even have to worry about anything else this is a massive sign to show this person more than the soulmate they are a twin flame a potential twin flame there's feeling safe and it's feeling that you don't need to look for anything else you don't need to want for anything else because you have everything you need and i was watching this beautiful video the other day where this person met um this man and she was i think she was about 16 and he was 21 slightly older than her but she said she just knew that this was the person that just made her happy and everyone was saying oh you're too young you're inexperienced and blah 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 um and they end up having four children together um when she unfortunately when she hit the age of 30 she got diagnosed with cancer um twice and he stood by her you know when she shaved her head when she was going through chemo and all the rest of it she he, he stood by her when other people even her friends stepped back he was still there not just for the sake of the children he was still there because he loved her and he said that it didn't even come into my mind to let her go to um move away or to not be with her it was like if anything she irradiated more of the love that we embodied in all the years we were together she got cancer free um, thanks to the grace of god but then she grew from there they both decided to um, again do some traveling as the kids got older and um, it's been I think it was about 20 years on the line they're still together but they've always said that these people they, their love outgrew a lot of stuff that they went through he was in a car crash as well not long after the cancer and you could almost say that they were kind of um, picked up by the universe but it was I think it was a massive um, building block for them both remember the building block that I mentioned don't let it waver it will just keep continue to grow and as it grows it grows into something more powerful and more exciting so and um, but they they still together today and that was it's a powerful story number five is about childhood memories so you your childhood memories may start coming back through dreams you may get a call or a message from an old school friend. You may um, be triggered by um, having nostalgia of wanting to go to where you grew up. You may still recall memories. These little things from your childhood will get triggered because as you grow through life, your twin flame grows as well, whether they're with you or living somewhere else. So if you don't know them, say when they were younger, obviously you may not know them but they grow as well and as you grow there's an element of your energies going through these changes and as you go through these changes it shifts and as you shift they shift and these triggers that you go through called expansion from when you were in childhood they get echoes in the future we sometimes suppress the energy the negative energy that we face but it's down to us to turn around and begin to over overcompensate. So these childhood triggers, when the twin flames about to appear, all these dark, do these dark memories from the past will obviously, whether good or bad, by the way, it's not just necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing. It could be loving memories. It could be a song that you keep continuously hearing. That's an energy showing you that your twin flame is about to manifest and appear in your life and as you're going through your dark night of soul as well and you start hearing these old memories from when you were younger or living these old memories or even dreaming about these old memories this is another thing to say that as i said in cycle one um, number one was said the death um, of being awakened that's when it starts to begin so as this is another trigger to show that this person's due to appear so point six is about being triggered by your past life. So you again, you may get memories of past lives. So you may go somewhere that feels so comfortable 
you may meet people that make you feel so alive and feel like you've known them all your life and again this is another trigger to say that this person is due to appear sometimes it's the person himself that starts that kind of has the association to that particular area or even to you so you may eventually have met that person and they will trigger a past life memory and also i just want to add that when you meet this person you i know we all have a tendency to talk about a past with uh, new partners but you will be talking about past past lives as in past events in your life and then you may even start having things in common that is unnatural that you would have in common so you may both not like the smell of burning or you may not like um, the sound of a certain horn or something that could be linked to a past life that may happen I remember working with someone before who had a past life and in a in their life they didn't like the smell of burning and they hated fire and it turned out they were burnt at the stake and their partner was also drowned because they were um, crucified or killed I should say as a um, well, deemed to be a witch back in the day and so both of them were brutally murdered because they were supposedly witches so but this other person who was the partner didn't like water in that sense didn't like open water eventually got over it because that's what past lives are about to do they are just things we suppressed in our past life in this life for us to now overcome for when we move into the next life for us to become a stronger individual so when you do have a past life and you may not like something it's probably more than likely that it was a past life event that may have called you harm that you're suppressing in this life that we need to unlock like a key in order to help you move into the new light and also to help you so when you move to the next life and when you're living in this life with the person that it's not a kind of like a a chain or ball to hold you back and finally number seven they trigger your chakras i left this for last because i feel this is probably one of the most important parts of the of the seven examples because when this person appears and this this is when this person appears by the way not coming up to when this person appears all your chakras get influenced this person will be in your life not leading up to when they appear they will be in your life now when you have this um, chakra shift and it could be for the fact is that your chakras get out of aligned when this person is around you or it could be aligned normally the, your body come your chakras become aligned um, when this person around you but you will feel like this tingling sensation or this burning not really heavy it's like a burning soothing sensation um, that within your chakras some people have even had um, feeling the different chakras opening so moving up from the base right up to the crown so it's a, it's an element of that these people or these when this energy comes in or when your twin flame appears it pulls in all these positive um, energies for you to do the work for you to be ready to transform into the next world and the next world when I say next world I mean with passing over I mean the next world your life your new life with your twin flame so I hope that's helped and I hope that's kind of cleared up some of the misconceptions and pre uh, misconceptions about the twin flame especially in the dark night itself because it's not a good place to be in but it's all good, can be a positive place to be in because it's a state where you become enlightened as I said especially if you can come in and out of the start night itself and especially uh, sometimes you meet your twin flame as you're coming out of the dark night itself and then as they appear they'll be around you and they'll be able to support you and sometimes you may find that you end up in hospital or you may end up sick or you may just feel like you're not just right and it's because this person has helped trigger that actual event it's a positive thing it's not a bad thing or it may be for the fact is that you may be waiting for an operation or you may be um, having back pain knee pain or whatever 
and when this person comes into your life it seems to just dissipate and go that's another trigger to say this is the twin flame so i've had the help and i'll see you on the next video and thanks for your time and again like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video and namaste